So today we have a Mila Optima dishwasher that's really loud, the pump's really loud. We determined it's not the drain pump and it must be the circulation pump. So this video will show easily how to get the pump out and to check the impeller to see if there is any kind of um, blockage or any kind of a debris that's making the noise. So we gotta make sure it's unplugged. We open the door, pull off the lower spray arm, pull off the triple filter, and we gotta get the water out of there. I usually use like a turkey baster to get the water out. I'm also gonna remove this one-way valve by pushing over toward the right. I wanna make sure there's nothing caught in here. There should be a silver ball bearing, but sometimes you can get seeds and things caught in there, and that can cause uh, trouble, maybe sometimes even noise when the drain impeller spinning. I'm spinning the drain impeller by hand with my finger and it should move pretty smoothly but it may have a little bit of a magnetic feel to it which is normal. I just want to make sure nothing's caught underneath there so I can use my turkey baster to get more water out and make sure there's nothing caught underneath that but it looked good. Now we're taking out the screws that hold in the dishwasher that are on the sides. In this case there were four of them, two on each side. This one is a little out of alignment, so I'm using my screwdriver to line it up, and then I'm gonna pull that one out. And once you have the screws out, you can just kind of wiggle back and forth, and your Mila should come out of the cabinet. The drain hose and the fill hose and the power cord are long enough where you should be able to get your machine out without having to disconnect everything. You do wanna disconnect the power cord, though. I'm taking off the kick plate at the bottom, There's two Torx 15 screws that you remove. And I'm removing another Torx 15 screw that's holding on the bottom plate. I'm gonna set it down on its right side and a little bit of water might come out, so you might wanna have a towel there. Taking out a couple more Torx 15 screws on the bottom and then I took out two from the front so I can pull this drain pan off. That's gonna give me good access to all the components below the drain pan. This is the circulation pump, and it's, we think that's probably where the noise is coming from. So that kind of a noise that we heard at the beginning of the video is from something spinning. It could be this thing too, which is the drain pump. And also this fan assembly down here could make a, a noise like that near the end of the cycle, but not in the beginning. This one was happening about 20 minutes in, we would hear that, that noise actually ran pretty good for, until at the 20 minute mark. So to get the circulation pump out, we're gonna take out a Torx 15 screw on the back. That's the, actually the only screw that's holding in the pump. Take that out and then we have to remove a bunch of wires. Take off these two connectors for the heater, the heating element. We took off one um, ground connector, pulling off the connector, bringing power to the motor here at the bottom. And then these are, there's four of these wire connectors that are coming into the heater pressure switch on the top of the circulation motor. And we're gonna pull these out. The black ones will be furthest away from you toward the back. And the white ones will be close to you in the front. And you, when you put these back in, you can't get them wrong because they only go one way. So don't worry too much about it. Just make sure the white ones are close to you and in the front and the black ones are further away from you in the back and we're going to pull those off and there's also another green ground wire we have to pull off there's actually three ground wires and we're taking off this big hose we're going to move the hose clamp up about two inches and then we can grab that and take it off and then there's a couple of hoses at the bottom we're going to take these hose clamps down by depressing it and then pulling them down by about two inches. Now I can wiggle and pull this hose off, get it out of the way. And there's another hose behind it. I have to do the same thing. It has a bigger hose clamp, so I'm gonna squeeze it. These are actually really good hose clamp pliers, but you could use any kind of pliers would work or vice grips. So I'm gonna squeeze it, pull the hose down. Helping you please consider pressing down in the lower right hand corner of your screen the subscribe button and that really helps our channel. So now we can just pull that hose off. It's the big 
big hose at the top. Kind of have to wiggle it. Um, sometimes it's hard to get them started. There we go. And I think we have all the connectors off. Now I got a end of a pair of pliers and I'm using it behind the motor to kind of pry out toward me at not a 45 degree angle, but a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna bring the back part of the pump out toward me and that's gonna help it slide out of the sump housing here to my right. It's just gonna slide right out, kind of wiggle and slide. It comes out of a rubber boot and that's the circulation pump. It's kind of expensive if you buy a new one. I do see there is something caught inside the impeller. You could at this point just grab whatever that is with a pair of pliers, or you can take off this plate. It has two Torx 15 screws that you take out, and then it has two clips that you have to kind of pry back, and then you can get that plate off. That's also what houses the heating element. I'm using a flathead screwdriver to bend that one clip out slightly, and I can get that off of its plastic piece that it goes over. I'll do the same on the back side of it. I'll pry up now a little bit in two different spots. And I can get this top plate off. And the only reason to do that is if you think there might be more stuff that you can't see that's wrapped around the impeller. We got that off. And that's a little uh, rubber seal. Make sure you remember that. So that's the impeller. And I can see there's something caught in the middle of it. It's like something plastic. So you could just grab it at this point and pull it right out. Or you could remove the impeller. If you want to get a better look. So you just put a screwdriver into one of these holes here on the back. And that helps to lock the pump so it can't spin. And that will allow you to spin the impeller off of the shaft. You have to grab it and turn it righty, righty loosey. Instead of lefty loosey, it's reverse thread. So you go righty loosey. And that'll loosen it. And then you can just by hand spin it off. And that'll give you a better look what's going on. So there's something caught in there. I'm also gonna spin this by hand to make sure that the shaft spins. Spins really good. Actually, it keeps spinning about four revolutions uh, once I let go, so that's good. That means that the bearings are in really good shape. So there's something in there. I'm just gonna pull that out. I'm checking these little tubes too to make sure there's nothing caught in them. But they look good. Check this one too. Nothing caught in that one either. Very good. So you could grab it with some pliers. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to pull this thing out. And it looks like it's some kind of hard plastic wrapper. So maybe when it got hot 20 minutes into the cycle, it expanded and made some, made some noise, but that's all that was in there. I'm not sure how it got sucked into the pump. I'm checking all these little veins too on the side. They look good. I want to make sure those are all nice and clean. And it'll actually work better now because it can move water better. Before it had that thing caught in there, it was obstructing the water flow. So I'll put the impeller back on by going lefty tighty. Again, it's reverse threaded. Get that on nice and tight. And then I'll put the screwdriver in the back to lock the rotor. And then I can spin it tighter with, by hand going lefty tighty. And I'll get it as tight as I can by hand. You don't have to use the pliers. That's good enough. And then we'll put this plate back on. It'd be a good idea to either replace this black rubber seal at this point, or you can clean it. You just wipe it off. Um, Sometimes people coat these with uh, some dishwashing, uh, dishwasher, dishwashing uh, liquid detergent to make it slippery. And I'm just gonna put this plate back on now and line everything up. So just make sure that that black seal is on there nice and straight. And then you can push that top down on there really tight by adding the screws back. 
we want to kind of tighten these two screws uh, back and forth a little bit tight on the one to your right, then a little bit tight on the one to your left, then tighter on the one on the right, tighter on the one on the left. So you want to do it gradually so it's even pressure on that seal. Then I'll do the one on the right a little tighter, one on the left a little tighter. Remember, you don't have to take off this plate. You'll probably be able just to see whatever it is in the impeller and just pull it out. And this is sometimes a point where the dishwasher can leak. <clears throat> so you want to make sure you get this metal seal on there really tight. I'm going to press down with my flathead screwdriver to push the metal part back over the plastic part. This in essence is kind of like um, a third screw. You have two screws and you have two clips, but I think a better design would have been if they just had four screws. That one's on there good. So then on the other side, same thing, just try to bring the plate down as tight as you can and then push down to get that metal to go over that plastic clip. Take your time here, make sure you got it. I'm even using a little bit of tap with my um, small hammer and screwdriver to get that clip over the plastic really tight. So it looks good. Just give it another inspection before <clears throat> putting it back in. I'm spinning it by hand, feels good. Checking inside here, this is the boot where the pump will go back in. <clears throat> Checking that hose again. So this little thing is a spacer. You want to make sure you put that on first. It has two little feet that go in two little holes on the metal piece. It locks in good. Okay, now we can add the pump back into the sump housing. The sump housing is that white plastic thing to our right and it's going to go in that black rubber piece. You could coat that with some liquid dishwasher. Dishwashing liquid um, would even make it easier to go in. You can also coat the inside of these three hoses, the big black hose on the top and the two smaller hoses at the bottom. If you put a little bit of that liquid dishwashing liquid um, detergent, it's slippery and it helps these hoses to go back on. I didn't do it in this case, so it's a little bit harder to get them to go on. Now I'm pushing the pump in and it'll lock into place, it just locked in on the back metal plate, the two little plastic pieces locked in. And now I'm gonna take my hose clamp and depress it and get that down over the big black hose on the top. Try to get the hose clamps right back where they were originally. So you have them fit in. You'll actually see a little groove in the hose that you want to fit into. Putting that green ground wire back on. Then I'm going to put these two terminals back on. These are bringing power to the heating element. Make sure these are all seated on as, as far as they can go. All right, now we're gonna put these wires back on to the heater pressure switch. The black ones furthest away from you go on first. There's two of them. One's a uh, big, one skinny. And I'm gonna put the ground wire, the green ground wire back on its clip. Here's the Next wire, we're just gonna push it on, wiggle it until it won't go any further. And remember, these wires will only go on one way. You can't get them wrong. So if they won't go in, just try the next hole over and you'll get it. Okay, those are all in, looks good. 
All right, so I'm gonna put this big hose uh, on first. And this is the hardest one to get on. It's just kind of a hard angle. If you did put that liquid detergent on first, it should make it a lot easier. But basically you wanna push the hose down away from the pump and then use your finger to push the back of the hose. The hose is pretty flexible. Push the back of the hose over the white plastic round part of the pump and then you can kind of wiggle it on. All right, so I got that back one on. I'm gonna use these hose clamp pliers to squeeze that hose clamp and I'm gonna squeeze it and then push it all the way back up where it was originally. I wanna get it into the same grooves where it was. These hoses are the ones that sh shoot the water um, out to the different spray arms. Okay, here's the next hose. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna get it over. That one goes on a lot easier. Put the power connector back onto the motor. I'm gonna push it all the way in, make sure it clicks in. All right, now I'm tightening that hose clamp for the other hose, the one that was closest to me. Got that back in its groove. I'm just checking those two hoses. I gotta put this ground connector on here. This is the one that goes onto the pump, the green wire. I got my connectors for the heater pressure switch all done. I got my connectors for the heater done. I'm gonna put the Torx 15 screw in the back. Get that tight. So you'll be able to fix this yourself if you have a loud pump. Something may have got sucked in there and you just gotta take the pump out, clean it, put it back in. Just take your time. This is the valve that lets water into the dishwasher, the inlet valve. This is the uh, motor for the uh, blower, the fan. That's the heater, that's the heater relay. That's the capacitor. And now I'll put on the bottom plate. You could, even before putting on the plate, you could put your machine back on its feet and run it a test to make sure it's not leaking first. But if you're pretty confident, you can go ahead and put the strip pan back on. So we're just putting these Torx 15 screws. There's two of them on the bottom and there's two of them on the front of this plate. This top one and the bottom. So when we got it on its feet and we ran it, um, it had all the normal sounds and at 20 minutes this time it didn't make the loud sound because we got rid of that obstruction. These are the two screws that go on the front these are Torx 15. I had to pull out this thing a little bit to get to the screw and I'm gonna wiggle it back down. It should be about an inch probably from the dishwasher frame. All right, we'll get back on its feet now. We're gonna wiggle it back into the cabinet. Just take your time here. There we go, pretty smooth. And then just take a few minutes to get the um, front of the dishwasher to be even and level with your cabinetry. And once you got it lined up, you can add the mounting screws to hold it. Hold it, they go into the sides. I'm gonna plug it back in, give it a test. Turn it on. And again, when we tested it, it did great. All the normal noises. So pulling out that little piece of plastic is what we needed to do. And these are great dishwashers, probably run for another 
five to 10 years. So now adding one more of those little screws that holds on the front plate this is the one that is on the right side. And we'll put the kick plate on and that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Yo, and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. Feel free to contact me at the email listed below which has got the fixitguy at yahoo.com.